This is State of Mind, and if you uh, subscribe, you can hit that little button right here. Look, look right here, Ken. Yeah. It's right here. See that? Uh, I have uh, on the show, State of Mind, uh, Ken Schreiner, again, because uh, you guys love him so much. And uh, uh, he's got a little more to talk about with his OCD, and I'm excited about uh, and uh, let's just put the cards on the table. He's he's he is G H. I mean, he, when G H started, and it was him, and then came Tony Gary as Luke and Laura, Jenny Francis, and among Tristan Rogers. I can keep naming them. Those were people that I watched as I was young growing up. We'll leave it at that. I don't need pioneered, to... laid the right. foundation. It was a dirt road before I came on. I kind of paved the road to make way for other actors. That, <laughs> like Sonny? <laughs> like, you know, like Sonny. And, you know. And so it's Ken. Let me, let me introduce you now. It's yeah. Ken Schreiner, the one and only. So, Ken, how yeah. you doing, buddy? I'm good. Thank you, Maurice. Um, yes, yeah, so we're, we're here to talk a little bit about the, the OCD condition, which when I was here last, I was probably more in the throes of it, of, of oh. what is this? I don't understand. Is it a, a, a voice in my head? Is it like a bad thing? Why do I, why do these thoughts get stuck? And what's going on? Who's, who's, who's behind all of this? Is it, is there like two brains at work? And now, you know, first of all, I think that uh, anybody that's has too much time on their hands, you know, it's, it's very tough to just spend Plus time. the pandemic, you can't forget that. The pandemic, that. anybody that had any kind of disorders got turned up on that. Yes. Because they're left alone, stuck inside, wondering what's going on. But the obsessive compulsive disorder turns out that it's not, first of all, it's not curable. You cannot take a medication for it. It is a day-to-day deal but when you understand it a little more and realize that it's a malfunction that you were born with there's no buddy to blame that like i was born with blue eyes uh that it just came with the dinner so what happens with people that are, suffer from ocd there's a, a in the back of the the base of your brain is not has trouble connecting to the front of your brain. Therefore, there's an called error detection circuit that is that goes gaflui. You so, did research for all this. Is that what's going? On? I mean, you no. I'm just like, making this up. No, I get it. But no, <laughs> last time you were, last time you were here. Yeah. Are you saying that you're much better now than you were then? I n nobody. Or you know more than you did then. I know a lot more, and I can put it in perspective. However. It is still a daily fight. It's always, how am I falling for this again? And you fall for it because your brain, like I said, your brain is not your enemy. Your brain is there to protect you. Yes. However, the, yes. Uh, the obsessive compulsive brain has a short circuit that, and so you can get stuck like a record on a, so, it, it, your brain is telling you we, we got to get we got to protect you today. We, we're on high alert, so you, the brain keeps sending you signals to make you. If you think you're in danger, or you think anything's happening, you're you're unaware of it. When the brain should just you be calmed down, like you would say, "Oh no, I got that. I don't understand what's going on." But uh, the OCD brain thinks that it, it, something's be done, that it, it's getting false signals. It's like getting spam. It's getting uh, uh, emails that are just about nothing. But is that paranoia? Not paranoia. It's just, why, isn't that, why isn't that paranoia? Because your brain is protecting you from any danger, and the brain says, wait a minute, this could be dangerous for us at, at, at Gelson's, at the supermarket. Why are these people, you know, what are you, what's with these people? And it's like, there's, there's nothing with these people. But that's obsessive thinking. But that... that's obsessive thinking. That's what the problem is, is that people get mad at themselves for the compulsions. They may get the thoughts, and if they go, 
Jesus, why am I getting this thought again? I got to just like, get rid of it and, and write it off. Everybody has thoughts that are not great thoughts. They just dismiss them as like, oof, that was a bad one. But OCD, they want to analyze them. The, the, the guy in the brain says, let's think about this. Let's talk about this. Uh, why, why, why we just have that thought? Does this mean something? You go, it doesn't mean shit. It doesn't mean anything. It's just telling you that we need to talk about this. But you don't need to talk about anything. That's right. where the, it's hard for, for that, that it gets confused. So it takes a while for you to say, you know, I just got to keep going. I, I, you know, if you, you know, OCD comes standard issue to people that have it. They can have the hand washing. They can have the constant checking. They can have the fear, the driving fear where they ran somebody over. And all of these things have to be dealt with. Otherwise, well, how how do you how are you dealing? Well, there's only there's only one way through OCD, and that's through it. There is no cure. There's no miracle. Anything every day. Can you help it? You help it by saying that this, you can't give in. See, when you give in, if I said to you, oh geez, I saw that kid step off the curb, I might have hit that kid, and you go around the block, you've lost the war. So you have to keep driving ah, and say yeah, that it, nothing it. is definite. I get you it. can't base your life on what if. The OCD thrives on the what if. I have two dogs that I live with. One of them lays on the couch and enjoys themselves, just sunbathes. The other one is a yapping dog who its job is to protect the house. Mm -hmm. So when the mailman comes up, the dog goes to town barking, 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 barking. Quiet! The, dog, the mailman leaves, and the dog is done with his job okay. until the UPS guy shows up. And then he's back in business. Right. So the OCD brain can, can function like, oh, I, I, I went to Gelson's, and it was fine. I had a couple of you know, weird things, but I kept going uh, until the next Get, issue. For people who don't know, Gelson's is an incredible it's a supermarket. supermarket. A very high-end, high expensive yes. supermarket. Okay, go ahead. Anyway, it's a grocery store. I'll just use the supermarket instead for... Uh, Anyway, it's your, your, so uh, that's pretty much the, 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 the short circuit in the brain has to be felt. You so to you're saying to me, if I say uh, I saw a cat across the street that was hurt and, I'm, and I drove by it, I would pass it and go, I got to go back to see that cat that was hurt. No, you would see the hurt cat and you'd say, oh, somebody, somebody, you would only go back if you thought you hurt the cat. Oh, okay. Your, let's say I thought I hurt. It's responsibility. Let's say I thought I hurt the cat and I got to, <clears throat> if I keep going back and forth and the cat's not there, but I keep driving and see where the cat is, that's not good. No, no, that's you. You would be like a guy that was going to take that, that cat to the vet. You would be a different guy. You'd be a heroic guy. You, the OCD guy will see the cat and hope that, what was that? Did I just hear a bump? Did I just run the cat over? And then you go back mm -hmm. and you keep going back. Where's that cat? Where's but you that cat? say don't go back. You can't go back. You go back, you've already lost the war. So you got to keep going unless you know you ran the cat over. But the, yeah, 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 the, yeah, yeah. the brain will say, what if we did? The what if is the, the enemy because it makes stuff up. The OCD brain, like I said, it's there to protect you. It's not really your friend per se. But, and it's not your enemy. It's just a guy that's saying, we're on high alert today. Now, me driving a Vespa, um, uh, which is a, 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 you know, the Rolls Royce of scooters, uh, you are on high alert when you're riding a scooter. If that guy pulls out, you're in trouble. If you're in a car, eh, you get run into the guy. But you go on, you, you hit somebody on a scooter, you, you're got, you know, you're in trouble. So, Riding a scooter, which is probably not the thing I should be doing, but I enjoy it, so I've been doing it, but it keeps you also on high alert. So when you're on high alert, your brain is already on high alert, so you're now on double alert, which is not good, but you have to figure it out. Okay, so Ken, so what you're saying is kind of what, you know, I didn't fly for 10 years. Right. Because of anxiety. I got off two planes. Right. It's in my book, Nothing General about it. Right, yes. Yeah, then, yeah, I read the, the book. New York Times. But I, I read the part about me, but the, I'm sure there's a lot of other great stuff. In there. <laughs> yeah. All right, so I didn't, I didn't fly for 10 years. And, you know, Dr. Drew was at my house. And I said, Dr. Drew, how do I, what am I going to do here? I don't, he goes, 
Well, you claustrophobic? He goes, I'm claustrophobic and I don't I like to fly. I said, well, what's the, what's the fix? He says, keep getting on. Right. So what I'm, and he was right, but at that time I'm like, oh yeah, that's nice. Thank you. <laughs> like that's easier said than done. But, you know, I'm starting to realize, especially listening to you right now, mile a minute. Um, I talk fast. Is all this shit has to do with your thoughts. Ment you know, manic episode, anxiety, depression. It, we need to know how to deal with our thoughts. And that could help a lot in what you're saying. Because you're saying you're not going to go back. So that's your thought. No, that's the only way to, to come through it. If I turned around and went back, when I get home, I go, you know what? I gave in to the, to the OCD. I went back around the block because I, I, I have to know. Was, did I hit that cat? Did I hit that, that kid on, a, on, a, on a, one of those things? That, did, did, you know? So it, it, your mind is, is, is telling you, go back. And you have to fight. Wow. To go back. So you're in a battle. You're in your own yes. war. Yes. And it's not visible to the naked eye. It's only going to you. Now, if you're with somebody and you ask reassurance, you're still in trouble. You can't say, uh, hey, I didn't just hit that guy. And No, you didn't hit the guy. Oh, thanks. See, you, you even, anytime you look for seek reinsurance, if you can't do it on your own, you're, you're giving in. So the fight to cure yourself, to get through OCD, to, it's, 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 the, it's ERP, they call it, where you, you put yourself in situations like if I say, uh, oh, I don't want to do this, you have to do it. It's like if, you, right, if you're right, a germaphobic right. and they, somebody comes at you with a hand, you go, uh, you know, uh, nah, you know. You're right. you go, no, no, give me that hand. And but no. that's the same theory. Right. You got to keep doing it. You, you got to do what you, you don't want to do. It's like, and every day you go, okay, what's going to challenge me, the OCD? Where am I going to get these thoughts when, oh, I got to drive there? So if I go on my scooter, I'll be on high alert, but at least I, I'm not going to kill anybody on my scooter. You know, but. Let me, let me ask you one thing here, Ken. They take, the, the people with OCD feel as they, they have a high, higher sense of, a responsibility mm. than your average yes. guy. They yes. feel responsible yes. for everything. Yes. And they are responsible. I asked you last time, but, you know, we were sitting like. <laughs> yeah, I know. It was your old format. Yeah. So maybe I didn't get what I wanted. Um, you're not in any. Okay, when I go through what I go through with depression, anxiety, I haven't been in. I haven't had a nervous breakdown. 30 years, so we'll leave that to it. But, but even then. So you're not in any pain. I'm, I'm not. I want to know. There's no pain. It's, it's, it's just what? What does it feel it, like? It is just that you're dealing with nonsense that you don't need to be doing. So a lot of people will say, but well, you're miserable. You're, and, you know, I think Howie Mandel on the cover of People says, OCD, I am miserable. My daughter has it. We, you're miserable because it haunts you, and you can't, you know, especially if you're alone, especially if you got, you know, I mean, the best thing to, is to just to be around people. If you can't be around people and, and get, you know, anytime you start to ruminate about an obsession, if you allow yourself to ruminate, you've already lost the war again. So you've got to find a way to keep it going. There, you get the depression and anxiety comes from the fact that you got to deal with OCD every day. Oh, it doesn't just oh, go oh. away. I get you. I get. You. I mean, yeah, I could take start... that yapping dog and lock it in the in the yeah, bedroom, I get you. and I don't have to hear it yapping right. at the mailman. But that dog's gonna gonna yap the rest of your life. The dog is trained to protect the house. That's what they do. I... Bah, bah, bah. But if they're not, if they can't, so if I don't go to Gelson's. I stay home all day. I may not have any anxiety today. I'll just watch Turner Classic movies and enjoy myself. But the minute you get out in life and the world, things come your way, and you're the the the, the yeah. disorder which isn't connected. I mean, you see people that could be stunted by. Let me let me just check it one more time. The the door it's locked. If somebody was standing next to you, they would say it's locked. By yourself. It, it, 
that's where you go wrong. Do you know, because I don't and, I'm, and I, I feel like a bad interviewer, I should have done statistics on this one. What are the statistics of OCD people committing suicide? Uh, not, not really. If, if they take it on, which is called puro, it, which is their, you know, it's, 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 it, they're with them. If they don't figure it out, uh, they, they, they could drive themselves crazy to the brink of craziness if they needed to, if they didn't. Yeah. But I, you I'd know, like but, to know that, though. But I don't think that people, because, you know, the, the funny thing about OCD, not that it's funny, but anybody that suffers from it knows that it's all made up. I know. It's just made up. Wow. And you say, how can a guy, the, the, this, this, this um, brain that's not computing everything properly and taking in this spam and all this stuff. Why is it, why are you even thinking about this? Why is it bugging you? Well, because it's not making sense to you. It's not computing until you make it compute. And that may require uh, 20 dr drives around the, the block. And, and, and professional help. Let's put that out there. Uh, you know, you can, can, can there's, yes, 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 yes. They have, there's a, there's I don't a, want to get people saying. No, 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 nobody's, I'm saying that there's a, there's a no OCD website where you can listen to people say, hey, anybody out there did this today? And it's pretty much the same thing. Like I said, there's standard issue OCD. It did, it, it, some of it, listen, here, here, it's all about training your brain. I, I was living in an apartment for months there was a jackhammer going on next door then i went back there was a jackhammer again i said you know i can't listen to this jackhammer so i tuned it out i was at um starbucks the other day with a friend and a guy says we got to get out of here i can't take that jackhammer and i said what jackhammer so i had trained my brain to forget about jackhammers ah. so that's what i'm saying so eventually you train your brain you just don't go around the block again. You drive your car the way you used to drive it before you let the OCD mess with your driving because that's one of the things it can attach yes, to. Yes. OCD loves to attach to, you know, all these different things. There's things that they attach to. You know, some, you know, is the, is the, the cleanliness and the afraid. I mean, yeah. COVID was invented in the mind of an OCD because they're always thinking, oh, what if I tell, what if I get, what, uh, yeah, what, what, yeah. Whoa, what, what, you know, oh my God. That guy just breezed by you. He's got the COVID yeah. now. You've got the COVID. That's yeah. impossible. No, no, yeah. I didn't touch that guy. No, that guy just injected you. No, he didn't. I injected you with what? What are you talking about? Right. So where? why am I having these conversations right. that don't exist? Wow. The brain needs to have the conversation because that guy is always trying to protect you. But it's like, shut up. Okay, Ken. Take yeah, it I, easy. Okay, take it easy. Just calm down. Now, take it easy. I want to get into one last uh, thing here. <sighs> Something I talked to about last time. Whatever you don't want to talk about, we won't talk about. Yes. But I need to get into this, and I cannot, and I'm going to start getting emotional. But I can't tell you why. I just want to talk about your, your parents passed away. Right. You were how old? 16. Damn it. How hard is that, dude? Well, it was a car accident. I know, but how hard is it? Well, at 16... You have a very young sense of survival. So you say, well, they're gone, but okay, that's horrible and it's it's hideous and you know, but you know, and next thing you know, you're you're now living with your grandmother and living in a different state and going to a different school. So you gotta you know say, Wow. Uh, okay, I gotta survive. Were you close with your mom and dad? Yeah. Well, they were in show business, and my father and mother traveled a lot, and we were kind of raised a lot by, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, the housekeeper, and and then at the time we were in a boarding school in Florida, wow. so we had already been kind of my brother and I had already been, you know, already Art. in in a, in in away from our parents. That they, so when the news came. To, to us, it was, I still imagine they're just, you know, they, they just went away. I don't see it as, I never really dealt with, well, they're not coming back. You may see them on the other side. But for now, you're, the memory, your father was, you know, a, a very funny humorist on TV. You know, your mother was a dancer. And, you know, 
I guess I'll catch up with him later. But for now, wow. I got to, you know, go. I mean, I went into professional acting classes in third grade. So when when I had to be on my own, I said, well, my goal is to be an actor. I've always wanted to be an actor. So let's just put that as your goal. And your parents will be, you know, see them, you know, when you see them. Wow. I mean, you can't. Now, that's at. But there was a period, though, the, uh, the funeral and everything. It was loud. happened so fast, and it didn't. It, it was so. Now, you're talking about you know, fifty years ago. Wow! Yeah, fifty years. Uh, so you know, the more you can then find out about your parents, the more interesting you were. That you you feel you know that we got gypped because I didn't get to talk to my father about show business and about all the, the comedians and all the people that he hung around with back right, in the right. day. And, you know, Jack Lane was at our house and all these people. And, and, you know, all of a sudden, you know, that's when I, when I get around you know, actors that I know that are, I've watched all my life. I, I love talking to people in show business and actors and their stories. And I would love to have talked to my father about, you know, he was a humorist and a comedian. And, you know, I mean, he, he used to make jokes to me about, you know, the only way you're going to get into college is in a jar. And, you know, I'm thinking, yeah, that's not very nice, but he's probably right. And now that I see <laughs> that I've got the OCD, I, I, they, maybe they will study my brain at some point. You know, I'll give it to science. Yeah, yeah, let it, yeah. Let, it, let it. There's another guy with the OCD. Let's figure out what's going on in this brain. Do you find that you substitute, as you were grown, <laughs> growing up, do you find that you substitute older actors or people like that as a father figure? Well, I got a very good father-mother figure when I started on General Hospital because uh, Peter Hansen and Susan Brown that played my oh, mother yeah. and father, I mean, he became the father figure. I mean, I had breakfast with him every morning. We did nothing but, you know, hundreds of scenes, thousands of scenes together. Uh, Susan and I would go to breakfast on Sunday mornings and she helped do my house. So I had like another... TV set of parents that were very, you know, yeah. I knew that, oh boy, if I act up, I'm going to get in trouble. Yeah, you know, yeah, it's yeah. Me, you know um, I can't come in, you know, unprepared. Peter's a professional actor. He's going to, you know, yell at me for, you know, what are we doing? You don't know your lines. Yeah. So, yeah, I had parental figures to keep me on track. And Tony Gary, Luke. Luke. Tony Gary. <laughs> <laughs> now, the, the. Tony Gary's the older brother I never really had, the one that was already ahead of everything. Right. You know? Do you feel like uh, it's like you maybe haven't, or you have, because you seem fine, but you haven't dealt with it, really? Like in professional help, maybe? Because let me tell you something, Ken. You lose your parents at 16 for anybody. That's huge. And I know you were a part, but it's right. dramatic. Um, and I can't tell you why this is... A, emotional to me I'll tell you off off this yes okay but uh, so you feel you're, you're you're good with it or you think you haven't dealt with it what do you think I don't think that any therapist is going to take me down the road of how tragically and how you must have, you know, how, how it affected you. And, and I'm not saying that I, uh, it, you know, it, it is horrible. But you also, most people then develop a sense of survival of the fittest, especially when you're young. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't pick up the phone and call my father for money. I don't pick up the phone and call, you I know, you, yeah. you know, kids today. Yes, yes. So when you're... Yeah. So when I see kids that are being so pampered and, and you know, I think, wow, they're not getting ready for what's coming their way. I mean, life is tough. Great. You, you want to come out here and be an actor in Hollywood? Yes. You better be ready to, you know, sink or swim. And you better know what the, you better have. You know uh, how to swim. You, you better know how to swim because L.A. is undefeated. Yes. And all roads in L.A., they all lead to the airport. So you're here. To, to, to try and accomplish, you know, a show business career, that can end quickly, just yes. like, you know, yes. 
so you know it's all I, you know who, who's going to go to their therapist and cry that they don't have a, a career anymore that you know oh yeah yeah well, they can do that too well you 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 know you can go to therapy and and, and try and figure out a lot of stuff or you can just try to figure it out yourself I just, yeah well that, there's there's two choices yeah well you know you I, or a therapist you know, I'm, I'm going with the you know yeah me. i get you all right listen ken yes i know you you've had a great time here <laughs> but i want to say one thing about ken Now, um, once we end this, I, I'm not joking. I learned, at first I didn't, because he was going a mile a minute, but I was still listening. But I learned a, a great deal about OCD from Ken. Now, yeah, I could learn it somewhere else, but the way he did it taught me a lot today about it. And... What he said about his parents also gave me a lesson today. And I just want to say I appreciate it. Here's well, let me end it on the Ken Hubbard, who I was named yes, after, that his, his quote was, if you laugh, the world laughs with you. If you weep, they're still going to laugh. Decipher yeah. that one. But that's a humorist from the 30s that my father chose to name me after because he must have loved him. And that's where this kin name came from. Beautiful. We could close on that if you'd that's, like, Maurice. No, that's, that's where it's going to close. Okay. I think I might close on my book. But close on the book. Let me read my chapter again. Oh, it wasn't a chapter. It was like <laughs> two lines, wasn't it? <laughs> no, I gave you good shit. Okay. All right, see you later. Bye-bye.